Hi, everyone. Right, this might work. It might go a bit crazy. I'm thrilled to be here. It's, it's, it's really wonderful to be amongst so many people. I think one of the first conferences I did was Madeira. There was about 200 people, and uh, it, Shelley was there, and Merga, and everyone else. And very nice to meet Alex. So wonderful to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm a designer, and that means I design um, everything from services to digital touch points to, in the past, I've also been a maker. I used to do furniture. That was the first business I had. Um, I'm also an angel. I made some money about ooh, 10 years ago and uh, sold a successful business and then uh, took a year out, got very drunk, had to get sober. Sober eight years, thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, I invest in, in startups and, and I put my money where my mouth is and I use the techniques that I'll talk about today in the businesses I get involved in. And I get involved in a few, a few different businesses um, every few years. And this is one called Ubi and we work with the guy, the engineer who did Garmin. And that's a student of mine who worked with at SCAD because um, I'm also an academic. And I set up the first MFA and BFA in service design at SCAD. And that's about eight years ago. And Diane Miller took it over. And now Maurizio, it's, it's doing really well. Some great students have been through that. And I love teaching. I love kind of um, being able to give a little bit back. And um, yeah, I enjoy it. And anyway, um, I also design with people. I design with groups, cultures. And I design with machines, particularly IBM, where the world is changing very rapidly in a scary rate. So IBM have been around a long time, and they've transformed themselves on numerous occasions in lots of different ways. Um, they're very good at doing that, and they're very good at um, looking and anticipating where things are going. And they, and they knew back in, in, in the 60s that design was good for business. Um, and then... Um, uh, Thomas Watson, who Watson, the, the whole cognitive thing is named after, invested heavily in design, and IBM can si uh, continue to invest in design now. And Ginny has put a lot of time and effort in getting design into the business and into the culture and changing behaviors, and that's key. Culture will eat strategy every day. And um, if you don't change behaviors, you can't change culture. And so design will fail. And design is just one part of the way we behave, and it's important to remember that. So IBM's got this really neat framework. It's kind of taken the best of, of other bits of design thinking, and it's created its own flavor. And that's really important. You have to create your own flavor for your context, for your people, um, for your sector. And IBM focuses on people, which is about users and clients, and it's about trying to turn up in the right place at the right time and, and give the right kind of experiences. It's about collaboration. So... I often work, uh, was working with teams of people who, and I was always the dumbest in the, in the room. There's people like with five patents for like Bitcoin and you know, incredible kind of AI um, biz, biz, uh, developers. And you work with different people in different ways, but you've got to find a way to collaborate. And so you need practices. And those practices need to enable you to share a point of view and align very quickly. And that's the key thing. If you can't align, then you would go off in different directions and it becomes very difficult. So, 1,300 designers, less one. No, 1,299. <laughs> yeah. Um, and $100 million later, yeah, that's how much they've spent the last five or six years on design. It's a big investment. I think someone said to me the other day that it's the biggest design community in, in any business. And then I heard that Accenture got 1,000. So, there's, there's, Design is, is really important for business, and, 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 it, and it pays off, and we know that the facts and figures say that. And we're at this unique time where, um, as designers, we can do an awful lot. We've got permission to do a lot. The challenge is, is you've got lots of different kind of nuances around design. It's like you've got service design and experience, and people kind of conflate them and mix them up. And actually, they're kind of different sides of the same coin. One is very strategic, and that's how I see service design very strategic, it's about a holistic approach, it's about culture, it's, it's about channels, it's technology agnostic, whereas experience design is much more tech specific, it's about journeys, it's about behaviors, but the thing that they have together is this, and that is a, an operational approach, which I call design ops, and it's about people centricity, collaboration, using data, not data driven, data informed, and I'm really careful how I use that word and that phrase. It's about being transformative, it's process driven and it's systemized. And you need to have that approach with design to be successful in a large corporation or in a large group of people or a large culture. 
So if IBM Design Thinking have this, this framework, it's kind of based on a DevOps loop, and it's about observe, reflect, make. You can call it discover, you can call it synthesis, you can call it deliver, you can call it you know, insight, whatever you like. I mean, it, essentially, there's a phase when you don't know too much and you're trying to find out. There's a, a phase when you, you're kind of reflecting and synthesizing and creating, and then you build stuff and you get it out the door. So I got together with my team and we looked at a load of different tools and brought them together with the IBM design thinking and service design thinking. And we kind of pushed them together, and, you know, a few tools that we found here and there, and we pushed them together. So we had a shared uh, toolkit, which were very general and very specific, and they broke down into different areas. And then what we did is working with Tim MacArthur, who's here today, which is great, I worked with Tim, and Tim built this wonderful um, website and worked with me and Diego and the other guys on putting this into a way we could share it. Socializing and sharing is key. Opening it up, giving it away, really, really important. We, we, and we focused on a digital approach to this, but we also, we had an analog. Because it's important to pick things up, hold them, pass them over. So we used this like for planning, and we tested these, and we prototyped them, we piloted them in a low-risk um, context. And we built a practice playbook, and in the practice playbook, it's how you can use these tools. Now, the big problem I had was I recognized that people didn't have two or three days to workshop because we're in the world of Agile. So we broke it down into one day, two day, three days, half days, and really looked at playbooks using these tools to give us strategies to deal with things like problem statement starters, framing the problem, aligning, enablement, research tools, learning tools. And, and you need these different playbooks and these different strategies to deal with different um, challenges that you face. And every challenge is slightly unique, and we have to hone and evolve the tools accordingly. But of course, there's a lot of this stuff, post-it notes, but, you know, I was going into rooms and people were producing post-it notes, but nothing came out of it. Nothing. It was just like loads of post-it notes and everyone went off and did their own thing. And I come across this time and time again. There's no matriculation between the tools. So I work really hard with the guys to, to say one tool which starts with very intangible, fuzzy front-end problems ends up going through a series of um, activities to give you something tangible. And that's key. You've got to land stuff and land it really fast. So you start off with aligning around problem statements. And a problem statement is another way of telling a story. User stories are the currency of the business. Everybody uses a user story. Marketing uses a user story. The dev guys use user stories. We as designers use user stories. And you start off with bits of paper, you write them up, you align. All the investment, all the money you're going to spend throughout the life of creating this product starts here. People used to say it used to be in the design stage. It's not. It's in the problem stage. You get this wrong, you're screwed. User stories then get turned into things like service blueprints. This is a service blueprint, but told through user stories, which we can share with devs, front-end devs, back-end devs. This allows us to work really fast. We can share this. We can use simple tech like um, Open Docs, or in our case, we can't use Google, so we do it internally with our own stuff. And we share these user stories. And these user stories can start off as very broad statements, but it's all about the who, the what, and the wow. That's a hill, it's a hill to climb. And I really like that language that IBM use. And we go in sprints. Understand, diverge, converge, prototype, test, and drop. Two weeks. Dropping something, it might, often the ball. Um, but dropping is about getting something out really fast, resonance testing it, getting some evaluation, just seeing what it's like and then moving on and, and taking the lessons and the learning. And these are 10 days. And a lot of people use these now. The place I'm working at now, we use SAFE, and we use an ART, which is, a, which is a, um, a, an approach to, to Agile, Agile Resource Train. And this is becoming the common model in um, large-scale enterprises. Trying to do a, a, a waterfall or a phase gate just doesn't work anymore. You just get tied up. The big wow diagrams, the wow diagrams, they've gone. We don't have time to do them. Post-it notes, user stories. Post-it notes, user stories. That's the key way. Throw it into something like Jira, and you're away. Because data is the new oil. Everything is data-driven. Data is the new oil because unless you pull it out and extract it and process it, it's not of value. And that's why we talk about data being the new oil. So what we have is data-informed innovation. And Larry Keeley talks about platform. Platform as a service. You develop your platform. You have an offering. You put it out to the user. You then glean insights based on behavior, 
data about deha behavior and, 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 and location. You rent, then run it through a cognitive system, you adapt your offering, and then you deliver something relevant. And that's what I call the virtuous circle, data-informed innovation. And economy four is where we're at. People say, oh, what happens when the robot's taken over? They already have. They already have markets, trading, day trading. You can't function in complex markets without um, autonomous systems now. It's all done by machine. Everything in the military is governed by cognitive systems. It's everywhere, and it's already impacting a lot of what we do. We're just late waking up to it. But what we have in Economy 4 is a shift from uh, selling services and solutions to platforms and outcomes. It's all about the outcome economy, driven by cognitive computing to deal with vast amounts of data. Trouble is, is we're using analog tools. And this is a problem. This was fine 20 years ago when you didn't have data, and it was great back in the day when IDO and DSchool and, and, and the rest of us who started using these tools, let's get the user together and we'll do some stuff, and it's really good. But we don't have time anymore. Um, it's, it's, it's a rarity. The amount of times I go into a, a company that's got lots of money and lots of resources and say, we don't have time. It's not the money. We don't have the time. So we've got to look at this in a different way. It's too slow. And it's too slow because it's analog, and we live in a world of data that's happening really, really fast. I mean, there's literally, literally petabytes of data being created every minute. So Cognitive is, is fast and smart. And this is a tool called Albert. It's a marketing tool completely um, based on Cognitive AI, and it's delivering marketing solutions. It responds in real time, does attribution modeling, and delivers uh, solutions, um, campaigns on the fly. No human intervention, no, no creatives. And then you've got Amazon Go. You're using everywhere ambient technology to facial recognition, um, looking at your bank balance, lots of different ecosystems coming together, using cognitive systems to recognize who you are, what you like, to offer you value, to offer you coupons. You walk in, you walk out, there's no payment. So this is, this is a very, very different world um, than it was 10, 15 years ago when we were using analog tools to design and create innovation. So the way I see it is you've got service design, experience kind of working together, sustainable design. Now we have business, IT, and then what I call design four. Design four for industry four. Working in this holistic approach, which is kind of where we've always wanted to go anyway. So, if we just sum up what Design 4 is, it's Design Ops, which is about strategy people, thinking, needs focus, it's very behavioral. Biz Ops is very organizationally focused, operations, business thinking. It's very much about culture, it's about distribution, and it's about financial. Um, Dev Ops is about tactical, tech-centric, it's very task-focused, it's very functional, it's feature-focused, it's about capability and processes. And then we have Design 4 at the top, what's the common feature? Agent-centric, not just people. Now it's machine to machine. And those machines are, are, are sharing information. Um, it's about people as agents, actors as agents. It's about heuristics. It's about transformation. It's about um, data-informed, data-driven. So it's a very different kind of approach. Um, and I'm not saying that this is going to happen all now, but it's evolving and it's coming. And we have to, I think Shelley talks about this, she's nodding furiously at the front, yes, yes, yes. And I think Facebook recognized this, you know, with their social graphs and so forth. You don't have time to get involved. So, you know, it re, you have to rethink the role of design, the designer, and how we work. And I think ag ag agile is something very new, but al already it seems quite slow in some respects. So I, I think we're in a position where we're beginning to rethink our roles, rethink the sorts of skills we need, rethink the way we we work um, in these different ecosystems. Um, some of them are intelligent machine objects, not people. So the six characteristics that I want you to take away, the takeaway for today is agent-centric, transformative, it changes businesses, it's disruptive, it's about breakthroughs, data-driven, data-informed. Data-informed because it's also about putting that kind of nuance of, of, of our take on things and then driven by heuristics. So design, for example, like UI design is increasingly about patterns and system design. You can, you can build algorithms to support you with that based on the, the content that you're producing. 
and you can automatically configure experiences based on these heuristics. Autonomous, and I mean that by in terms of autonomous groups of people, but also autonomous systems, robots. And those of us who've seen any footage around things like Boston Dynamics and where robots are going and how they can do stuff, or bots where you're having a chat, you think it's a human being, but it's not, and that bot, that conversational interface is handing over to an, a, a real person, then back again to an agent, and you can't see it. And that's why I, use, I talk about agent-centric design. And then connected, because everything is becoming connected through an API ecology, it means that data can be shared instantly, it can be ported um, quickly, it can be viewed, you can review, you can take it away, you can hold it, you can share it. So we're in a very, very different position as we were 10 years ago, so we need to rethink who we are as designers, what we're doing, and what design means. Thank you.